Proverbs chapter 3, and before you say he was in there last week, I got something new for you. It's a new year, new you, talking about you and your health today. We started out the month, we started out the year talking about our new commitment to God, and last week we talked about your attitude. Today we're going to talk about your health. And uh, this is kind of a, uh, this is kind of a, a profound message because Usually at the beginning of the new year, everybody likes to has a New Year's resolution, and what they want to do is they want to lose weight, right? So that, that could be part of the new year, new you, uh, but the physical side, uh, the physical side is only one-third of the topics that we're covering today. So don't, don't get all wrapped up, in, and I know you guys are high on your, your bodies and everything, uh, especially the guys. Proverbs chapter 3 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. So in this, I thought, I'm going to throw this out there. And, uh, and Kenny, you, you do the math here. If there's a connection to the obedience and the giving and the health, and, and Mike, find out if they're all intertwined in there, if, if, if it sounds like it could be intertwined. Let's just, verse 2 says, this is where I want you to make an asterisk. There will be two places in the reading here. It says, for length of days and years of life, and peace will be added to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of man, God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he'll make your straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. Make an asterisk on verse 8. It says, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Sounds pretty good so far. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruit of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. So through obedience and, and through this giving and through the scripture and uh, and, and through the, the truths of the text, speaking on health today, I believe I can become better, I can become healthier uh, by following the Lord's commandments. Amen? So let, and if some of you guys right now, and I, and I thought about this, and, and I've never done this, I go, how can I, how can I get this together where people believe that this, this, this total package really is something that God wants us to get? So, he says, go to Ecclesiastes. And I thought, hey, man, that's cool. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. And if you're reading on the big board, when we get it up there, it'll say, the end of this matter, all has been heard. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Same guy uh, with basically the same message uh, telling God's people, um, you need to follow his ways. At the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God. Say it with me. Fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. And he said, this is the duty of man. And I thought about this and I thought, well, you go, well, what's the book of Ecclesiastes all about anyway? So what's the, what's the mystery in it? Well, there's really no mystery in it at all. The people have been doing the things that Solomon was, was doing or trying to do for thousands of years, and you said, well, what did he have? And, and, and maybe he lacked in things, and, and maybe he didn't have a big enough farm, or he didn't have enough money. He was the richest man that ever lived, had all kinds of women, had all kinds of money, had all kinds of horses and chariots and slaves and men slaves and, and, and girl slaves and parks and, and farms and more than anybody's ever had. And he chased after those things. And, and, to well it, and to where it became unhealthy, he just chased after them. And you may know family members that are chasing after things and stuff. And he says, he says throughout the book, he says, vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. So here he says, fear God and keep his commandments. That's how he sums up the book of Ecclesiastes. So let's pray. So Lord, it's uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy to see that. This man, and actually, Lord, in the text, it does say that he denied his eyes nothing. He had everything that he, he saw, he wanted, he got. And uh, I thank, Lord God, that he 
found out he should just follow you and, and give up trying to follow the ways of the world and trying to, and to prosper in the, in, in the flesh, that he would follow you and, and your word. And that's my prayer for your people today, that they're obedient in every area of their life. And uh, um, that way, Lord God, I believe we become healthier people altogether. And we pray this in thy name of Jesus. Amen. So let the offering be picked up, applaud the Lord, and here we go. Um, well, I got to tell you, if you want your marriage to be healthy, you'll go to a uh, date night that we're having here, February 26th, uh, and me and my wife will be there. Anna's outside. She can sign you up February 26th, or 22nd, I'm sorry, February 22nd. Doors open at 6, standard 6.30, catered by Tonatories, and our guest speaker will be Pastor Marty Haas from Grace Church. It's $30 a couple, so get in before they change their mind and go, oh, we messed up, it's more than $30 a couple, and they go, it's $30 a couple, and it's catered, and you get to hear a great speaker, and you go, oh, pastor, you're going, your marriage must be a wreck. Actually, my marriage is fantastic, it's never been better, Amen. but when good conferences like this come around, I get in on them, and don't, don't act like you, well, I don't need it, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> if you're doing pretty good, make it better. Amen? Isn't that why we come to church? To hear the Word of God. So get your marriage better and it'll be healthy. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is where we're going to start talking about the, the, the ways of being healthy. And uh, let, me, let me throw out a disclaimer um, that the Apostle Paul talks about uh, sin in here. Uh, he talks about it all through the Bible and all the books that he has written. And uh, we, I want to let you guys know we're not the church that picks on one particular sin. We don't, we, don't, we don't beat people up because our sin's better than their sin. All sin is wrongdoing, and in the way you get healthier in the body is making sure you do the things that God has called you to do. Um, and yes, in here, in, I, I, was, I was doing this about getting healthier, and I was reading. The, the, he talks about sexual immorality. He talks about you know, food and drunkenness and all these things that we don't need to be doing to our body. And, and I tell you what, it's the Holy Spirit that really convicts me when I want to batter up another chocolate chip cookie. You know, you're, you, and you try to justify it, and you're like, you know what? And you, you're like, well, or if somebody gives you a gift, and maybe it's like cookies or candy or whatever, go, well, it's a, it's a gift, God, I'm going to go ahead and devour the whole thing. So that's, that's one of many things that I deal with, uh, Tom, is, is, is eating more than I should eat. It's just we've got to kind of get that, get that together. Amen? So when we go through these things, I want you to be thinking about the reason that the Apostle Paul lists these things is to try to get the church of Corinth a little healthier. You read about the kids when they come to the Lord's table. They're chowing down the bread. They're drinking the wine and everything like this. And the theme runs through this book. Actually, it starts in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 where he says, uh, the Apostle Paul says, it's been reported that there's sexual immorality among you. And it's listed. You name it, it's, it's in there. Um, so let's pick up in, in verse 9, and we're talking about health. So say health. So we're talking about the physical part here, and then we'll go into the soul, and then we're going to go into the spirit. So there's three parts to being healthy. Don't just, Pastor Bevo, don't just go out there and just work out, and you're going to be buff like crazy and not worry about the soul and the spirit. You have to train that too. Amen? And, and for all the people who are at North or on live stream, this is a, you want to talk about getting healthy, this is the way to do it. 6.9 says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And we're, the church sometimes is very good about pointing out somebody else's sins. Some churches have the, the certain sins that they really like to point out in everybody's life. Let me tell you what we do at our church. We really get down. We, if we're going to talk about getting healthy, we have to deal with all these issues. Amen? He says... Uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither sexual immorals, uh, uh, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men of practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And, so, and here's the remedy for all this in verse 11. Uh, verse 11, it says, and such were some of you. What does it say after that class? But you were... Why? Stop for just a second. That means there's a remedy for sin. And the church said, amen. You would applaud right there. Oh, thank God. 
Thank God there's a remedy. I thought it was going to be like this forever. No. <laughs> and then I'm preaching about this, and I'm sitting in my office. I'll give you an insight in my life. There's a bag of blazed Doritos. Sitting in my office, I'm going, are you kidding me right now? You know I should devour all them. But I only had two. Let's, let's go back to that, Diane. He says, you were washed, you were sanctified. What does it say, class? He says, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So all them things that he listed and all the, the, the things and the, the things that affect the physical body, he says, you were washed. Some of you guys were washed in this. And thank God for that. It's kind of like Pastor Bebo said, thank God he didn't leave us in that condition. You know, and, and, and sanctification's a process. So here's where he breaks it down. So he, he names it, and then he, and then he breaks it down in verse 12. He says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are uh, lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for food, and God will destroy both and the other. The body is not meant for So he goes on. So I'll stop there before I get into this next. So he says, all things are lawful for me. So that means I am permitted. There's, there's chocolate chip cookies all over the counter. And they're lawful. But it doesn't mean I need to eat all of them. That's what that means. And you plug your sin in. Since we're, we're airing that out. And you go, well, hey, there's nothing wrong with me sitting in front of the TV for an hour and eating a couple handfuls of chips. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't mind that. He just doesn't want you to do that all day long. Oh, it's going to get quiet in here. Where I'm just talking about health, and you deal with it and, and do something with it. God, God wants the, the people to keep their feet moving so they can stay healthy. Amen? There's nothing wrong with getting a little rest. Um, he, says, uh, he says, I will not be not. He said, uh, then after that, he says, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but the Lord and the Lord for the body, and God raised the Lord and will also raise by, be raised by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Question mark. Then he says, never, exclamation point. Or do you not know that who is joined to a prostitute becomes one with their body? For it is written, the two will become one flesh. And he's quoting here, Genesis 2.24. He says, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin... A person commits is outside of the body, but sexual immorality, uh, immoral person, sins against his own body. And here's what he says here in verse 19. This sums it up. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have, been, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. So this is the word of the Lord. And this church said amen. So also the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, he also talks about your body being a tent, and he talks about it being a jar of clay. So jar of clay represents, Dr. D, that we're very fragile. The Holy Spirit lives inside us, but the, the body's very fragile. Regardless, guys, of how tough and how muscular you think you are, the body's still fragile. Amen? Girls, elbow your husbands right now, because... Oh, yeah, man, when they got out of the gym, you got to check these out, babe. Still got it. You got the gun permit to prove it. Amen? So that, that's, uh, so here in this, God wants us to, to remember that the bodies are fragile, and he also, the Apostle Paul calls the, the, the body a tent. And I don't know if you've ever, ever seen a tent or you've seen some of our tent revivals that we have and and after a canvas tent has been put up many many times after a while it just kind of starts to fade away and starts to deteriorate regardless of how young you are eventually the flesh will st not me man oh yeah gonna be like this forever don't you remember that when you're looking at old people and now you're the old person you're going Oh, dude, I'm going to be like this forever, rock and roll. 
Now, and, and, and I talked about it working out and tanning the skin and coloring the hair and all that kind of stuff. And don't I look great? Yeah, but here's the deal. The body's not meant to go on forever. We've got to be careful that while we're working on the body, we're also working on the soul. And you go, what is the soul? I'm confused. Here, the soul is the personhood. Say personhood. So when I speak to you today through the Word of God, I'm speaking to the person that lives inside the body that has flesh wrapped around it. That's the soul. When you talk to your children, you're not talking to their flesh. You're talking to the soul of that child. Some are, some are restless souls and some are very peaceful souls. Amen? And when, they, when, when some of them souls get too restless, mom and dad calm them down a little bit. Amen? So that's what the soul is. The soul is inside of the person, and it, and it uh, is your DNA, if you will. Psalm 23.3, here's how, here's how uh, King David says it. He says, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes that profession out to, to you guys, and you guys have heard it through the years. I shall not want, since the Lord's my shepherd, I don't always have to go chasing after the fleshly things. Don't you like to have all the new gadgets? We've got to have the, the watch we can speak to the phone. I wanted one of them. And you speak, and it would, goes to your phone, and my wife goes, you'll never use that. I go, I may never, but it sure looks cool, though. Want it. And... Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. What does it say, class? He what? He restores my soul. Isn't that what we're all looking for? We're looking for a place where our soul can be restored. If you're looking for a place for your flesh to be restored, that's the gym or the, or the exercise room or walking on the track. That's how you restore the flesh and treat it right and, and, and all these kind of things. And our flesh will get regenerated and we believe that organs can be restored. Uh, vitalize some things by being healthy. This is how you get your soul, uh, uh, rest in your soul is by going to the Lord. And then it says he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So you can think about that. when Just sometimes going outside and breathing some fresh air can make you feel better. It, it, it does something for your soul. You go, you know, I'm, I'm looking at God's birds. And even as cold as it is, sometimes it's nice just to be outside. There's a sense of freedom. There's a sense of peace. And, and, and the birds are chirping and all that kind of stuff. Let me go with you into 3 John uh, chapter 1, verse 2. And let's see if the two are connected here with, with the health that he talks about. So in 3 John... It says, Beloved, I pray that, beloved, I pray that all may go well with you. And that you may be, what does it say, class? Be in what? Be in good health. God wants you in good health. So he's giving you a body, he's giving you a brain, he's giving you the Bible, and he wants you to take care of it. And you go, I'm not going to follow anything. I'm my old man. I do whatever I want to do. My grandpa smoked and drank till he's blah, blah, blah. My grandpa did too. Well, that doesn't mean I've got to follow his ways. Oh, you're not listening to this message. Well, if God's given us a, a, a body and, 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 and maybe, let's do it this way. I did this at the end, but I'll do it in the middle now. Maybe we need to change our needs to our must. I need to quit eating so much chocolate chip cookies. Maybe I need to turn that into a, a must. You plug in yours for a second, and, and maybe, maybe it's just changing the word and then acting on it because I, I must stay around so I can raise my family and I, can, and I can help raise my grandchildren. I must start to take care of myself. And I must, and I must do that because God's given me a church to take care of too. I need to, I need to. I think need to is just a, is just a way to get out of it, Pastor Bebo. I, I need to quit eating so many of these Doritos while I'm hogging them down. 
I need to go to the gym or whatever. I need to take a walk or I need to get up and move or whatever it is. Here's what I need to do today, churches. We need to change that language and look at yourself and be honest and take responsibility and say, I must get up. I must walk. I must eat healthy. I must read my Bible. I must, I must, I must. <laughs> That's like semi-applause there. Don't bother me when I'm in my lazy boy. <laughs> Amen. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. So they, what he's saying, he says he believes it goes hand in hand. So we talked about the body, we talked about the soul, and the last thing and the most important is the spirit because it doesn't mean anything if your spirit hasn't been regenerated. You can look as good as who knows what and blow the gates of hell wide open because your spirit hasn't been changed. Now I'll elbow somebody and say, listen up, Jack. John chapter 4, let's see if I'm right about this. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. And all the young people up there at North that are listening, I want you to, I want you to plug into this. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. And God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So in order for me to genuinely worship the Lord, I need to do that in spirit and in truth because God knows when you're faking it. <laughs> and, and he knows our intentions and everything. And I thought about that when I was putting this message together. And I, I'm thinking about that and I thought, you know what? I want to get a chew of tobacco. Love chewing tobacco. I haven't chewed it in 19 years. But I wanted it because it's something that my flesh desired. And you'd have never known if I was out chewing tobacco at the farm or not. But God would have. He's going, really? You're preaching on health and doing this and doing that. And you're out here at your farm doing this and doing that and spitting everywhere and carrying on. Just say, just say oh, that's gross. <laughs> Hold on for a second. Listen to me. All sin is gross. Oh, there ain't no applause on that. That's just the manifestation of something going wrong. I'll get off of that. So in John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. Man, that really busted my bubble right there. The flesh is no help at all. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And I don't know if Lacey's watching. She might be. We went in and prayed for her yesterday. And she's so sweet. And so young to be diagnosed with breast cancer. But we believe, like I had Bubba and Patty up here at the last service, Patty is in good health, and she beat cancer. Yeah. And 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 maybe there's something to the whole thing when we get it all together and kind of go, you know what? God does really does want us to be healthy because we all have responsibilities. And I want to believe that Lacey's also going to beat cancer. Uh, life's life's short, and and if you have been out wrecking your body and who knows what, it, it ain't too late to to get it right and and get healthy in that area. Uh, and it, and it starts in church, it starts in church, and 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 when the spirit is changed, the soul is changed, and then there's an outward manifestation. With the, and we don't all have it right, and don't always see, you know count all the calories, and I don't ever do everything right. But I'm watch this, I'm trying. I'm trying. And, that, and I think that's what God wants to see out of you today is he wants to see some effort that you're, you're willing to take care of your spirit and your soul and your body. So I wanted to end with this in, in Romans chapter 8. And if I could bring the pastors down. We're, I'm reading 11 verses, so we'll be a little long, but I want you to be in position um, for the hearts that, that want to give their life to Jesus today and, and talking about spiritual health. It says... 
And Pastor Bebo can bring his team up and we'll start him playing. He says, there, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And thank God for that. I want to talk to somebody who blew it last night. You started your diet or you was where you wasn't supposed to be. And you go, you know what, man, he's cranking it down on me now. Or I let the text fly or I let the email fly or I didn't do this and should have done that. He says, if you're in Jesus, he says, there's no condemnation in me. Because that's, that's, what, that's why people don't start up again. Chuck, it's because they feel guilty of wrongdoing. And, then, and, and if the guilt goes away, the devil and some of the devil's friends will remind you of all the stuff that you did in the past. Am I at the right church? You're getting quiet on me. Oh, I'm not coming back because if I come in, they're going to deal me a fit and they're going to ask me a bunch of questions. Hit man, when I come in, and they're going to want to know all this and why are you so unhealthy and why did you do all that? And you just tell them simply to just shut up. Well, in the name of Jesus, shut up. It's like the church police all over again, even in the area of health. Is that, is that where we're at now in church life where we, if somebody does slip up, we point at it? Or should we go, that's all right, man, I'll, I'll do it with you. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't backing off. Back off? Now ain't the time to back off. Now's the time to get on and say, come on, man, we'll do it together. If you screwed up. God died, for, hey, God died for the screw-ups. Oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. Amen. We're going to get healthy, man. It's just one little step at a time. Well, this is from the law of the Spirit has set you free. In Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. And those who live according to the spirit have their things set on the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So what we're trying to do is get your spirit regenerated, because when a spirit's regenerated, it can change a soul, and when a soul's changed, there can be a physical manifestation, not just with you, but your whole household. Whoa, that's powerful. Are you telling me that I can change my own household? That's exactly what I'm telling you. You just stand there as a beacon in your family and go, we are not going to do this anymore. We are not going to do this in 2019. We are not going to be physically unhealthy, mentally unhealthy, spiritually unhealthy. We're not going to do it. Then you go, well, what's the other choice? Just kind of dwindling away. Is that okay? Can I say that here today? You know some of them. They just, just, what happened? Well, we just kind of, it kind of weighs on your church after a while, doesn't it? And you feel like nobody's around to help you. Let me tell you something. This is a pick-me-up. God's around to help you today. And you can come out of the muck and mire and you can be regenerated. Uh, and I'll end with this. There's more in Romans, and you can read that. But I want you to rise up with me now. So I'm going to ask you this question. You don't, even have to, you don't even have to come to the altar today. I'm just kind of doing something that God's dropped in my spirit. I'll read it, then I'll ask you the question. Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, there is, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, and the old is past, and behold, the new has come. 
Let me ask you this question. Close your eyes. I'm going to ask you this. Would you like to turn your needs into must? I need to do this, Pastor. I need to do that. And instead of the need word, let's get rid of it today and just go, I must. <laughs> just, I must. I'm, you know, you can't continue to do what you're doing. I need to do this, Pastor. I need to do that. I need to do this. I need to do that. What about, what would happen if you must do this? I must be the husband my wife wants. I must be the wife my husband wants. I must be the daddy. I must be the mommy. Or I must be the uh, grandma or grandpa. I must be the beacon in my house. I must be the beacon in my community. I must stand up for what is right. I must be healthy. On and on and on the church says. Right where you're at, just raise your hand and say, I would like to take my need and turn it into a must. Just raise your hand and let me pray for you right where you're at. And for all those who are north, raise your hand. And all those who are in live stream, I'm not going to ask you to come down. You don't have to name it. You and God are going to work it out. I'm just praying for you, praying with you. Lord, one simple change could change our whole lives. We know what we need to do. We've been talking about it for years. We've been talking about it for years and years. We need to, we need to. We're turning them into must today. We're petitioning you, God, because we know you can do something about it. And we're sending, we're asking you to send the power of your Holy Spirit to get that done. Surround us with your mightiest angels and protect us from the enemy. And we pray this in thy name of Jesus today. And his healthy church said amen.